Welcome to the Say Network Podcast. I am your host today, Abraham Guevara. And with me here is uh, Jim Sparks. Hello. And uh, Megan Villalpando. Hey, guys. And with us, we have Lieutenant Jeff Walters with us from the Hawaii Pacific Island Division. Hello. Hi, everyone. He is uh, the Divisional Youth Secretary of that division, and uh, we're super happy to have him Skyping in with us. Um, and uh, we're, we have him here to, to, to discuss with us uh, a topic that I think is very interesting uh, to myself and, and to him as well. He's writing a, a really good paper on this, uh, and it is uh, basically about the Salvation Army uniform and uh, a little bit about its history, a little bit about its purpose. And uh, I think it's a really fun thing to explore, uh, especially uh, for those who are in uh, youth ministry and those who are, um, you know, for your young people who are barely getting to know the Salvation Army. Um, I think this is something uh, that they need to know about because a lot of times we just ask people to put this on, but we don't explain it to them. And I think this is a good place to maybe uh, get into that and explain it. Um, but before we get into it, before we get into our interview with Jeff, uh, we have Megan here uh, with a youth culture piece. And, and Megan, what do you got? So I'm going to talk a little bit about a resource. I shared about this briefly um, recently with the DYSs. And um, I don't know about you guys, but... One thing that drives me crazy about Instagram is that you cannot put a link on your post um, and, and like a live link. And the only time that you can have a link is on your bio of your profile. And you can only have one link. Link in bio. Yes. <laughs> and it's really, really annoying. Um, I think I think some people can, but you have to have like 10,000 followers and Instagram has to like grant you permission and all this kind of crazy stuff. So. Um, we're not anywhere close to 10,000 followers. So um, instead, I found an alternative that I have found to be really helpful and I think could be helpful to other people as well. Uh, it's a resource called Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. -E. If you just go to linktree.com, um, you can actually set up a list of all the websites that you want to direct people to and they'll create a custom link for you that you can put into your bio on your Instagram profile. Oh, nice. And the advantage to that is when people click on that link, it brings up all of your sites and things that you want to link them to. So for us, for Say Say Network, we have like our Say Connect site on there. We have the Redwood site, Service Core. If we're accepting applications for WII, we'll put a link to the WII application on there. So it's been a really helpful resource for us. I think in a, in a core setting, it could be helpful to have um, maybe a link to your course Facebook page, your social media page, pages, your divisional page, um, whatever stuff you have. If you have an Instagram, it, it can be helpful for that. So it's more just a resource um, yeah. that that I found to be really helpful for us. And I think other people would find helpful as well. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you guys uh, are pretty active on social media, right? Yeah, I think it'd be really useful. Um, today's world, everybody's on social media in some shape or form. So I think that anytime you can do more uh, through that avenue, uh, you do it and you do the best you can. So it'd be helpful. Yeah, I think it's super helpful, especially with multiple uh, platforms um, and all your stuff scattered throughout the internet. I'm sure we have accounts, say, say Connect or Say Network accounts that we've probably forgotten about somewhere out there on some like social media craze that you know came by or whatever all right well with that i'm gonna uh i'm gonna toss it to, to megan and we're gonna open up this interview and in our little discussion about the uniform all right um jeff just a couple of questions uh, more kind of about the origin of the uniform um I've been in the Salvation Army for a long time, but I didn't grow up in a core where um, people wore uniforms a whole lot. So, so uniforms, I'm I'm still learning more and more about the uniform as I as I'm in the Salvation Army longer and longer. So, um, do you know why uniforms were first used in the Salvation Army, like initially? Well, I think as I'm researching on this topic, uh, I think you kind of have to go back. To to before we were the Salvation Army. Um, we weren't always called a Salvation Army and we didn't always use army rhetoric or symbols or you know uniform. Um, we were the Christian mission born on the east side of London in a broken part of town. Actually quite literally started on a, a, a unused graveyard. Um, and under a tent it was born this movement that grew very rapidly 
Um, and it was such a, an aggressive movement for evangel evangelical purposes and sort of a revivalist movement. So aggressive that um, people started to call it like a volunteer army, and then it became the Salvation Army. And that was around 1878 when it was coined the Salvation Army. And, and once that happened, I think what, what happens thereafter is it sets into motion this, um, uh, what you call sort of a popular uh, rhetoric at the time where, you know, military rhetoric was used in a way to describe the war against uh, Satan and injustice and sin. And um, with that military rhetoric came things like the, the uniform. And um, they really just ran with it. Our, our founders and people like Cadman and, and Railton, they really ran with it. Some of them were, you know, they, res they were reserving at first. Uh, um, sorry, let me say that again. Uh, some of them were hesitant at first. Like I know Rail Railton was concerned that wearing a uniform would, you know, maybe do the opposite uh, that they wanted it to do. Um, but they adopted the uniform because it was a part of this sweeping uh, military movement that was aggressive for the purposes of Christ and preaching the gospel and, and saving souls. Um, at that time, too, uniform, military, military rhetoric, that was all very popular. Um, the community, especially the working class, were really gung-ho about uh, the military, and, and they uh, they latched on to, the community latched on to this sort of symbol, the uniform, the rhetoric, this charismatic talk, more so than they would have latched on to the traditional churches at the time. So for all intents and purposes, the, the, the question being why the uniform was first used is, is it because it, it served the purpose of the Salvation Army at the time? It, it was um, something that drew attention. Um, it caught the public eye, especially the, the public eye that they were looking to catch, the people who had been disenfranchised by the traditional churches at the time. So it was a, it was a tool. And in the early army, we should note, too, that the early army at that time was very excited about wearing a uniform. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that answers that question of why. I think there's a lot more to be said about why, but um, we need to speak of of wearing uniform at that time within context uh, about uh, concerning where the Salvation Army came from and, and the sort of movement that it was. For sure. Um, I, I'm curious, do you think people, when they saw um, Salvation Army members in uniform, that they were associating that uniform with the Salvation Army? I know nowadays sometimes our uniform can look a lot like a pilot's uniform or something like that, but do you think that, I don't know if you can answer this, but um, when people saw the uniform, that it was associated with the Salvation Army back then? Um, I don't know exactly. I do know, though, by the 1880s, it's written um, that this uniform was the unifying symbol of the Salvation Army. Um, originally, too, the Salvation Army uniform, uh, not even until the late 1880s, was not like a uniform uniform, if you know what I'm saying. And initially, uh, I think for the first 10, 20 years even, uh, it was kind of sporadic. Um, you know, some would wear a uniform that they called the red jersey, I think, where it was sort of like, I don't know, we might call it sloppy today. Um, but it was definitely not the kind of uniform that we have in place today across nations where, you know, you can recognize, oh, yeah, that's the Salvation Army. But it must have worked to their advantage, and it must have caught the public eye and enough to, to warrant everyone starting to wear it. Um, I think people would have recognized, um, you know, when they start putting the crest on it, for example, the red jersey, people would recognize those symbols. Um, and, of course, this was a public Salvation Army. This was a Salvation Army that was, for the most part, out in the streets, right? And so they were causing a scene. They were banging a drum. They were uh, preaching to the public eye, they weren't hiding in a corner. So I think folks would have recognized it, not just because of the uniform, but because this was the spirit of the Salvation Army, witnessed by all. So basically the uniform didn't necessarily look the way that it looks today in its early days. It kind of developed into what it is today. Yeah, um, so it wasn't until I think 1883 uh, when General Booth um, put the stamp on it and said, 
you know, this is the uniform everyone's going to, at least initially, the officers need to be wearing a uniform. And it did look different then. It's not the same uniform today that that was back then. Um, and But I think what's key here is, you know, Salvation Army, or then the Christian mission, started 1865. So some time had already passed before the army became an army and the rhetoric was used and even the uniform became a staple um, or a unifying symbol. So I'm just curious, in your research, have you found any anything about why polyester? Why did they choose polyester? <laughs> why, why that fabric? Why that material? Um, have you came across anything along those lines? You know, this is a funny question because uh, we always hear folks complaining about polyester, especially in Hawaii. You know, if you come out to the Pacific Islands, um, especially if you go out to Marshall Islands or, you know, Micronesia, Guam, polyester is the enemy, right? It's it's just very difficult to bear. Um, but what, what I think we should take note of here is that the uniform, uh, since its inception, was never meant to be... Um, uh, something that didn't change, right? Um, and you can read about this all over the place, whether it's in the officer magazines of old or, or war cries or even in our history books. Um, Sandal, the, his name's uh, last name Sandal, the historian who writes the first handful of volumes of our history, um, he writes that the uniform has always been subject to variation in accordance with circumstances. So I say this because you ask about polyester, and although we dread it, it's a very durable form of uniform. Uh, it's something that's easily um, replicated or produced or whatever. And so I think the reason why we have polyester today is for practical purposes, not necessarily flashy reasons. Um, whether we like that or not, that's for the listener to decide. But ultimately, I think polyester is just the go-to at this point in time in our history because of practical reasons. Doesn't mean it can't yeah. change. Not though. to mention it. Not to mention it's bulletproof, <laughs> <laughs> and there is a twelve-hour hanging cycle on it where you don't have to iron it. You can keep <laughs> it in your trunk for an entire week. But if you hang it up for twelve hours, you don't even have to do it in the bathroom. It doesn't have to be in the shower with that humidity or anything. You hang it up, it'll be wrinkle free. It, I mean, <laughs> it's like weighted. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think also it, it's I, I've noticed it's in warmer, uh, sorry, warmer, colder climates that the polyester is used. When I went on service corps in Jamaica, they used a more breathable material. It wasn't polyester; it was some sort of like breathable breathable material. And then I think in like India, they have an adaptation of the uniform as well. And I don't think it's polyester. They're so. mostly cotton. Is it cotton? Mostly. Like a, a more breathable material. I was just going to say, uh, you know, the good news, right, about uniform is that it's flexible or at least intended to be something that could be uh, altered uh, depending on the circumstances. Like you mentioned, uh, Megan, in India, it was altered very much so and to uh, meet the the demands there in that area of the world where they could then preach the gospel uh, more effectively. Um and but yeah, hopefully the polyester thing is not an everlasting deal unless I guess some people really enjoy it. But um, I know that it, there's a lot of myths about the polyester, you know, that it can deflect bullets and whatnot. Um, it's not a myth. I don't know if Fact. I buy into it. But. What's another myth? Do you know any other myth? We could give it a try. <laughs> well, there's all kinds of things, you know, in training school, um, there were lots of tricks on how you can clean the uniform. To, like you can rub the uniform on the uniform and it pretty much erases any mark. True. Right? That's pretty awesome. That's awesome. I, I've used all of these. We need to test this this out. On windy days, you could you could start a fire <laughs> with the static that builds up. What more reason to come together than, you know, we have dirty uniforms and we need each other to really just purify. Right. There you go. I, uh, I I wirelessly charge my car on windy days with the uh, static that goes up. That's awesome. You know how you take care of the static issue? Because that is a real issue with polyester. Lotion on your legs. Mm. Stops it immediately. <laughs> Hat tip right there. There you go. That's awesome. How does that work with nylons? <laughs> you, gotta let, you have to wait for it to dry. To dry. <laughs> I just remember an old lady in my core going, put some cocoa butter on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> she was right. What's the what's the lifetime of a uniform? Like lifetime. It, it's a lifetime. It is. <laughs> I think I think what's fascinating from from this about especially about the material of the uniform 
uh, most a lot of the settings we see it in probably like 80 percent, 90 percent of the time are kind of formal settings. But it almost seems like this is a work. This is a work attire. Like like when I think of the the work the Salvation Army does, I feel like the idea is this is a this is a work attire for like on the streets. This is a work attire that is you know in, in the uh, EDS truck. You know this is what it's for. It's to spill coffee on it just in case you know from handing out coffee you know it's it's something that is it, i would imagine like seeing a, a bunch of guys wearing hard hats in a in a in a, in a, in a uh, formal environment you know you'd see hard people wearing these these uniforms that are work uniforms um kind of almost like manual labor type things uh which is really fascinating because it, it just shows you what the salvation where the where the mentality is with a lot of these things it's 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 service right um I was looking at a uh, article from the bbc and it was, this is a non-salvation army publication talking about the salvation army and it, uh, and it said that the, the uniform, it, it signifies a servitude to, to humanity, being a servant to mankind. Uh, so what you're wearing essentially is like a maid's uniform or, or, a, or a, a waiter's uniform. That's essentially what you are. And, and it's really, it's, it's very Christ-like if you, if you, you know, if we put it in its proper like context, it's, it's being like Christ, you know, it's wearing something uh, that is that, you know, I, um, putting yourself last, you know, it's putting yourself in that position of, of helping others. And I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty great, you know? Um, but we're, you know, in regards to, to this article that you're writing, why, why did you, uh, uh, what, what, tell me a little bit about it. What is it? What is this about? Um, I think we need to start with this idea that, um, the world is changing. Um, I'm a part of the millennial gener, uh, sorry, let me say that again. I'm a part of the millennial generation. And so I'm just naturally fascinated by um, the issues that are facing my generation. And also within the Salvation Army, it seems like there's this, um, it seems to be, at least in the Western world, there's a growing division between like the interpretations of certain methods or measures in the Salvation Army between, you know, the older generations and the younger generations. And so if you go on Facebook, for example, which a lot of millennials and younger don't even use anymore, but... Um, if you go on Facebook, you'll discover that whenever the topic of uniform or soldiership comes up, it's usually one of the most debated uh, topics that come up on a forum um, for whatever reason, right? And so people love to chime in in the Salvation Army on what they think the uniform is about and how they think it should be used. And and so anyway, I, I would notice these things and naturally wanting to write and learn uh, and research, I was thinking, um, you know what, I don't know a lot about the uniform. And before I say some quick, quippy uh, little line on Facebook or, or social media in general, before I just throw my ideas out there, I should probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to just look into the uniform. Um, and also part of this too in my story is I'm a first generation salvationist and I'm probably the least I consider myself one of the least religious people at heart. Like, uh, I'm not very uh, big into uh, ordinances, you know what I mean? Uh, those types of things. And so when I first got saved through the Salvation Army and became a soldier, I butchered the uniform. I was probably the worst soldier when it comes to uniform wear. I literally showed up my first Sunday of being a soldier, I showed up with dicky shorts because I thought, hey, you know, these dicky shorts look just like uniform wear. And I put on some Converse and I wore it with the uniform top. And I thought it was the coolest thing. I'm thinking I'm going to appeal to the younger generation. Like, I think they're going to like this. Not realizing there was a code of conduct, right? That there was protocol for uniform, that there's O and R for not just officers and soldiers regarding uniform. And so I got my, my hand slapped. Um, I got uh, some awkward looks. Um, thankfully, it was a graceful conversa or congregation because I think some congregations would have booted me. Um, <laughs> and so all that to say is as I'm writing this paper, it's not just because I want to know more about the uniform and where it came from and why we wear it, but it's also because I come from a background where there was no such thing, right? And I think that by writing this paper... And if more people did stuff like this, where we write and research, we could sort of shed light on these big questions that these younger generations have. And I also think that we make a mistake, um, and no matter what generation you're a part of, we make a mistake if we water down the concerns of those younger people who ask about it 
if we just say, you know, uniform looks sharp, so be sharp and act sharp, wear the uniform, it doesn't answer sort of the deeper rooted questions that they have concerning why. Like, why is it that we wear this thing to symbolize our faith instead of doing other symbolic acts to symbolize our faith? You know, there's just a lot there. So that's why I started writing the paper, because I felt like I could sort of answer some of these questions for myself. And then also by putting the paper out there in a neutral fashion, not sort of like stoking any fires, really, hopefully not, to shed light on the conversation overall. I like what you said about um, uh, that you wanted to educate yourself uh, before, uh, before giving your opinion on the topic. I think that is like a, uh, if there's a nugget of wisdom we can take from this, it's that. Because there's so much that uh, that is kind of inflammatory. People automatically get get triggered by certain things that they see, and we'll comment and we'll say whatever we want. Um, but you, you're actually trying to take the time to b- before you can even give any kind of you know thought on the issue. You want to really make sure you know what you're talking about. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome, man. Look, I people ask me why I'm writing a paper about uniform because it's probably the weirdest thing, right? Like, why would anybody do this for fun? And it's because. In my shoes, since 2007, I can't tell you how many times I've heard others like either complain or get angry or frustrated or or just asking questions about uniform in general. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This is my family, right? The Salvation Army is my family. This is the organization that uh, you know I believe in. This organization, I'm a part of it. Um, and so I would imagine that if we want to make progress on this hot button issue, uh, we should know about it. We should know where it came from and maybe see where it can go from here. Um, hopefully a paper like this among other papers and other research, uh, we can actually make progress. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I guess maybe I'll just ask you now, where, where did, where did you go to like, and a lot of this research, what are some places that you're you're visiting online or books? What are, what are some you know? Where are you at? Oh, there's a. I've started collecting a lot of different books. There's um, so the the history of the Salvation Army uh, volumes, um, and for this paper, it's really just the first volume. Uh, there's also um, books by Harold Hill, Leadership in the Salvation Army, uh, Community and Mission by Phil Needham. Um, there's uh, old archives right that you can have access to you just have to put in a request but you can access the national archives of the salvation army and dig up stuff from the war cries from the late 19th century and just stuff like that that really uh in these archives for example you find nuggets of truth that might have been hidden away for a long time and the folks that are, you know, going off about these things in the public sphere or social media sphere, they wouldn't know about these nuggets. So I, I, I sort of take pleasure in digging them up and just putting them out there, right? Uh, and there's more and more people like this who are just interested in digging up just statements, right, of faith or statements of, of actions made in the past or just factual things that we could put out there and say, you know what, I didn't say this. The current general didn't say this. This was said way back in the day, and maybe it'll help us understand this topic a little bit better. Jeff, where do you see uh, some of the positives as you've been reading through all this stuff of the uniform? So as I research, I learn. Uh, I think some of the positives already coming out of it is um, noting that the uniform has always been intended to be a testimony to salvation and separation from the world, right? It speaks loudly whether, again, whether we agree with the uniform or not, it speaks very loudly. Uh, When somebody puts on a uniform, people take note of that. You walk into any store or any public corner, whatever, you know, people will notice that, hey, that person is wearing a uniform. So, I, I've come to grips with the fact that this is a tool for us. This uniform is a tool that not many churches or organizations have, but we have. Uh, there are some organizations that use a uniform and it helps them in the same way, but it allows us to speak louder than if we didn't have it. Now, I think s- there's some debate there on, on whether it's the most appropriate um, symbol, or maybe if there's another way we can uh, alter it or something. But regardless of of how we have, uh, what our opinions are, or how we view it, it is definitely something that we can use 
for salvation purposes, for serving others, for drawing attention to the work of Christ through us. Um, so I think the positives that I've learned is that, um, you know, before I think negatively about it because it's either boring looking or polyester or whatever, I need to remember that this is a tool that could be used to save souls. Um, but also some of the positives from doing this research and learning about it is that I've become more aware of, of its history, its purpose, and maybe how it could look in the future. And I think if I can help spread that um, knowledge or if I could sort of spread that sort of uh, vibe with other people, then there would be more and more people willing to approach the topic of uni uniform more effectively. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if any of that made sense, but... Yeah, no, it made good sense. Uh, what, how can we better communicate the purpose of the uniform? This is a tough question. Um, first, I think that more Salvationists need to take the time to research instead of regurgitating maybe what somebody else said at a pulpit or, or online, right? Um, so whether it's you guys or officers or whoever it might be, soldiers, um, if you want to be better communicating or if you want to be a better communicator of the purpose of the uniform, then do the research. Um, but also, I think what we also need to remember here is that uh, communicating the purpose of the uniform may not solve the deeper rooted issues facing uh, methods or forms or measures. Um, in other words, you know, we can't just communi communicate the purpose of the uniform and think that that's going to solve all our problems, right? Uh, keep digging, keep researching, and of course, pray, and uh, hopefully God will lead us through a time of, of change. Um, and who knows, maybe the uniform will last, right? Maybe with some alterations and whatnot, maybe the uniform will continue to speak to generations to come. What is your hope for future uniform wear? I, I think my hope for the uniform, for uniform wear, is that no matter what, that the wearing of the uniform reflects the heart of the person, um, whether it's soldiers or officers or nobody at all, I think the most important thing is that we live out our faith with integrity. Um, the uniform can be an amplifier of our faith, or it can sort of become uh, something that hides it if we're not living out our faith properly. So in, a, in short, I guess my point is here is that my hope is that we live out what the uniform is intended to symbolize. And if that's a problem, if it continues to be a problem, then we should carefully look at the deeper rooted issue, the heart of the person, and not make this about clothes or what we're going to wear, but make it about faith and following Christ with integrity. Very nice. I feel like there's this, uh, it's, it's almost like don't, don't wear the uniform in vain, you know? Don't, don't put something on just because you know, you're putting it on, but, but know what the purpose is behind what you're doing. I feel like that's true with any form of worship. Cause I would, I would put the uniform in that category as a form of worship, you know, uh, that's very specific to the Salvation Army, which is pretty great. Uh, but yeah, like if any form of worship, whether it's a song or, um, you know, even prayer, you know, don't do it in vain. Don't just do it to do it, but don't do it to be repetitive. Don't do it just because that's what you always do, but do it because you know why you're doing it. You know, every time you dress it on, you know, you, you put on th that garment, you know, you're putting it on because, uh, you, you know, it's a sign of worship and you know where it's coming from, man. I, I think that's really awesome, dude. And I, I thank you for doing that research and for going on that journey. And I, I really can't wait to see, um, where this takes you and what you, what you come up with, man. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would echo that as well. Um, they say, you know, culturally um, as a nation, we're, we're almost more divided now than we ever have been. And I think when we actually go and look at the origins of certain things or, you know, even, even within our faith, like within the church, you know, um, when we look at the origin of things, we do the research, we look into it. I think a lot of times we can find that common ground to be able to like really understand where certain things come from, certain traditions come from, certain beliefs come from. Um, so I, I, for me, that's what I take from this whole thing is, is do the research, do the work, look into it, make an informed opinion, informed decision, um, rather than just taking one little piece that, again, somebody put uh, put on social media or that you've heard in a sermon or something like that. But actually, like, look into that, follow up on it, do some research. I think that's so valuable. 
Yeah, I think as even as like the youth leaders like listening to this, I think you need to um, tell it, make sure you educate your your young people too and like why they're doing it. You know, giving them a, a make sure you're clear with you know this is why we do this. This is why we put this on. This is what makes the Salvation Army unique. Um, and yeah, man, that's that's awesome. So you're suggesting that we do soldiership classes? Man, do them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for oh, sure. That's a whole nother paper. <laughs> <laughs> a whole nother podcast. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much uh, for for being with us and sharing. Um, I know you're you're still in the process of researching and writing, but we appreciate you being willing to share, even even though it's unfinished. Um, we do appreciate that. If you are listening and you're interested in learning more about Lieutenant Jeff's article on uniforms, um, we will post that link in the show notes once it becomes available. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Say Network podcast on iTunes and on YouTube so that you can receive notifications and make sure that you do not miss an episode of the Say Network podcast. And thanks for listening. And we'll be back soon with a brand new episode.